deserved outcomes from two types of abandonments mentioned in the Quran. In the name of Allah, the Most Merciful, the Bestower of Mercy. Whoever abandons what is beneficial will be put to trial with what is harmful. Imam Sadi, may Allah have mercy upon him, stated. This is found in a number of verses, that when the polytheists shunned the worship of A. R. Rahman, Allah, they were put to trial with the worship of images, idols. And when they displayed haughtiness and claimed that the messengers were, only, humans, i.e. therefore they will not follow the messengers. They were put trial with submission to everything that made, their, intellect and religion unstable. And when Iman was clearly shown to them, i.e. the disbelieving nations, at the first instance and they recognized it, but then turned away from it. Allah, glorified be he and free is he from all imperfections, averted, afflicted and sealed their hearts. So, they did not believe until they perceived the painful punishment. And after the straight path was clarified for them, but they deviated from it by choice and approved the path of deviation in opposition to the path of guidance. They were punished Allah allowed their hearts to stray, due to their own wrongdoing, and became confounded in their path, of misguidance. And when they belittled the signs of Allah and his messengers, Allah belittled them with a humiliating punishment. And when they displayed haughtiness, Allah humiliated them in this life and the next. And when they forbade that Allah's name be glorified and mentioned in the mosques of Allah and strive for their ruin, then it was not fitting after that they should enter it except in fear. And of them are some who made a covenant with Allah, saying, If he bestowed on us of his bounty, we will verily give sadaka, zakat and voluntary charity in Allah's cause, and will be certainly among those who are righteous. Then when he gave them of his bounty, they became niggardly, refused to pay the sadaka, zakat or voluntary charity, and turned away, averse. So he punished them by putting hypocrisy into their hearts till the day whereon they shall meet him. Because they broke that, covenant with Allah, which they had promised to him and because they used to tell lies. Surah at Taba. Ayat 75-77 Some of the hypocrites have made a promise with Allah, saying, If Allah gives us from his bounty, we will certainly give charity to the poor and we will be of the righteous ones whose actions are good. When Allah, may he be glorified, gave them from his bounty, they did not fulfill the promise they made with him. Instead, they became miserly and did not give any charity, and they turned away from accepting the faith with hatred. Allah therefore firmly established hypocrisy in their hearts until the day of judgment, as a punishment for their breaking their promise with Allah and for their lying. Do the hypocrites not know that Allah knows the plots they keep secret in their meetings and that Allah, may he be glorified, is the knower of all gave things? No action of theirs is hidden from him and he will repay them for that. Do the hypocrites not know that Allah knows the plots they keep secret in their meetings and that Allah, may he be glorified, is the knower of all gave things? No action of theirs is hidden from him and he will repay them for that. Those who find fault with the believers who voluntarily give a little charity, who only find a little that they are able to give, and they poke fun at them, saying, of what use is their charity? Allah mocks them in return for their mocking the believers, and they will receive a painful punishment. 80. Allah will never forgive the hypocrites, even if the messenger was to ask for their forgiveness, because they do not deserve to be forgiven, no matter how much forgiveness is sought for them. They disbelieved in Allah and his messenger and they deliberately oppose Allah's sacred law. Those hypocrites who failed to join the battle of Tabuk were happy not to strive in Allah's path, in opposition to the messenger of Allah. They were reluctant to strive with their wealth and live in Allah's path as the believers did. They said to their fellow hypocrites, in order to keep them behind, do not march in the heat. The battle of Tabuk was during the hot season. Say to them, O messenger, the fire of hell that awaits the hypocrites is much hotter than this heat that they are running away from, if they only knew. Let these hypocrites, who fail to strive in Allah's path, laugh a little in their temporary life of the world and let them cry much in their everlasting life of the afterlife in return for the disbelief and sins they committed in the world. If Allah returns you, O Prophet, to a group of these hypocrites who are firm in their hypocrisy and they ask you for permission to go out with you in another battle, then say to them, You, hypocrites, will never go out with me in Allah's path, as a punishment for you and a means of avoiding the harms that may arise due to your presence with me. You were quite pleased to remain behind in the battle of Tabuk, so stay with those sick persons, women and children who remain behind. Do not offer the prayer, O Messenger, over any one of the hypocrites who dies, and do not stand to pray for forgiveness at their gravesides. That is because they disbelieved in Allah and his messenger, and they died whilst they had left Allah's obedience. No prayer should be offered or such a person. Do not, O messenger, let the wealth and children of these hypocrites impress you. Allah only intends to punish them with that in the life of the world, through the difficulties they face and the disasters they are afflicted with respect to them. And that their souls leave their bodies while they are in disbelief. At Tauba, 75-85 the ayat with this meaning are numerous and in them is that the servant was close to being guided and made to follow the straight path, but then he abandoned it after knowing it. 
or he renounced it after following it, so he is punished and has no right to guidance. This is a recompense for his actions, as Allah said about the Yahud, i.e. those who knew the truthfulness of Muhammad's, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, messengership. But turned away from it willfully. And when there came to them a messenger from Allah, Idati Muhammad, confirming what was with them. A party of those who were given the scripture threw away the book of Allah behind their backs as if they did not know. They followed what the devils gave out, falsely of the magic, in the lifetime of Sulaiman. Surah al-Baqarah Ayat 101-102 When Muhammad, peace be upon him, came to them as a prophet from Allah, and he fitted the Torah's description of him, a group of them turned away from the scripture that showed this. Throwing it behind their backs, unmindful of it, not benefiting from its truth or guidance, like fools. When they left the path of Allah, they followed instead what the Satan said. Lying about the kingdom of the Prophet Solomon, peace be upon him, by claiming that it was established through black magic. Solomon did not disbelieve by practicing black magic, as the Jews claimed. But the Satans were disbelievers when they taught people the black magic revealed to the two angels, Herod and Merat, in the city of Babylon, Iraq. These two angels would only teach black magic to someone after explaining that they were simply a trial and a test for people, warning them not to be ungrateful to Allah by learning it. Those who learned black magic from them but did not listen to their advice would, through it, separate a man and his wife by sowing hatred between them. These sorcerers are not able to harm anyone except with Allah's permission and by his will. They learn what harms them and does not benefit them. This group of Jews knew that whoever exchanges the scripture of Allah for black magic will have no portion in the afterlife. What an evil thing they sold their souls for when they exchanged the revelation and sacred law of Allah for black magic. If they had known what would benefit them, they would not have done something so disgraceful and clearly misguided. Al-Baqarah 101-102 They abandoned the most sublime, the most beneficial and the most truthful of the books, i.e. the Quran, so Allah put them to trial with following that which is the most debased, most untruthful, and most harmful. Those who wage war against Allah and His Messenger abandoned spending their wealth in obedience to Allah, and, instead, spend it in obedience to Shaitan. An excerpt from, Al-Qawaid al-Hazanli Tafsir al-Quran, pages 96-97 Whoever abandons something for the sake of Allah, it will be replaced with something better. Imam as Sadi, may Allah have mercy upon him, stated. This affair is found in many places in the Quran. Allah made a mention of it regarding the first immigrants who left behind their dwellings, wealth, and beloved ones for the sake of Allah. So Allah substituted that for them with an enlarged provision, honor, and authority in this worldly life. And when Ibrahim, peace be upon him, disassociated himself from his people and from his father and that which they worship besides Allah, i.e. after his father threatened to stone him. Allah bestowed upon him Ishak, Yaqub, and righteous offspring. And when Sulaiman, peace be upon him, was distracted by his horses from the remembrance of Allah, he got rid of them, so Allah substituted them. Allah said. So, we subjected to him the wind, it blew gently by his order whithersoever he willed. And also the shayateen, devils, from the jinn, including, every kind of builder and diver. And when the people of the cave, i.e. the young men mentioned in Surah Al-Kaf, disassociated themselves from their people and that which they worship besides Allah. Allah bestowed upon them His mercy, and facilitated for them means to success and tranquility, and made them a guide for the misguided ones. And, regarding, Maryam, peace be upon her, Allah said. And she who guarded her chastity, Virgin Maryam, we breathed into, the sleeves of, her, shirt or garment, through our Rujibriel. And we made her and her son, Isa, a sign for the Alameen, mankind and jinn. And whoever abandons what his nafs calls to thieving desires, Allah, glorified be he, will substitute it for the person with love of Allah and being repentant to Allah. And with what is superior from that which is gathered for him, or her, of the pleasures of the worldly life. An excerpt from, Kawaid al-Hazanli Tafsir al-Quran, page 164.